Okay, so you need to get a little tired, get cozy. Alright, so what's your names? I'm Diva Danielle. Jan. Jan, and uh, how many years have you been going to Burning Man? This is going to be my eighth year. First. <laughs> Alright, so what? how are you prepping him for Burning Man? Uh, well, I just started because this just kind of got decided, so we have basically two months now to oh, get okay. him ready. <laughs> okay. So the first thing was this morning, actually, I started reading him the Burning Man website. <laughs> Okay. Reading him the Burning Man website in bed. It was so romantic. And what did you learn? Uh, what did you learn? Well, actually, she was mostly pointing out the different art. Yeah, we were pieces, talking about the art. Oh, okay. How it's going to be so like enlightening and fun and easy and relaxing. <laughs> I was kind of nervous. You, okay. It's, I was like, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know if easy is the right word, but no reason to be nervous. <laughs> what do you mean easy is not the right word? <laughs> But next I'm going to send him to the uh, first time he's got. Okay. He says he doesn't like drinking water, but I've told him that, well, first of all, I drink lots of water, so I think he'll be covered, because I'll be like... And you know what? I've been doing like 13 episodes of Burncast.tv now, and the number one answer for virgins is drink water. So get used to it. What are your hopes for Burning Man, Young? Um, well, I guess I, I hope for it to be fun and enlightening without being overwhelming. <laughs> it might be overwhelming. Do you remember your first Burning Man? Was it? Yeah, mine was, I just remember the first night that I got there, I was with an old friend of mine. It's weird, actually, after Burning Man, we didn't talk for like six months. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, I don't know, I think he was maybe annoyed with me, because I was just like, I just wanted to go everywhere, and I was like, oh my god, look at that. Oh my god. I think I just said, oh my god, like 50 times the first <laughs> night that we were there. Because we, I can't remember, I can't remember what our address was that year, but we were right down the street from this red castle that had like a DJ inside, but from outside the castle you would just hear the music, like boom, boom, and you could see the lights and like the castle windows <laughs> coming. I was just like, what the? <laughs> Um, so my first year was pretty overwhelming. It was hard because I went into a theme camp immediately. Oh, what was it? It was called the Netherworld Ranch. It was with, it was a group of people from San Francisco, from LA, and from New York. And just the amount of work, and we had mud wrestling, which I realized <laughs> is a horrible idea at Burning Man. I did do the mud wrestling one day, and I just got out. And I will say, I know a lot of people at Burning Man are like total naked people, which is totally cool, but I'm just not a naked person. You're a costume girl. I'm a costume person. But after I got out, I was wearing clothes in the mud wrestling, but after I got out of that, I like took all my clothes off and was like, please get this mud off of me right now, because when you get out, it starts hardening on your skin. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, help me, help me. It was just so much work. I was a little traumatized. Like I actually tell people, I'm surprised I went back the next year because that first year was so much work. And then because I hadn't been there before and I didn't know what to do. Like and being in a theme camp sometimes, especially it was a first time theme camp, people get stressed out and everybody's fighting and everyone's like, you're doing this and I'm doing this and you're not doing enough of this. And there was a lot of that. So it was really traumatic. So the next year I went back and I just camped with friends in the background and was like, okay, I need a year to like acclimate yeah, and like yeah. really not be stressed out about a camp the whole time. So how's Burning Man changed in the eight years you've been going? It, some things have like totally changed and then you know, other things have stayed the same. Like I always go with a close knit group of friends, so I some I feel like my experiences with people, like every year I still have those really magical experiences, even when the burning man around me seems to have changed. Okay. Like I still make really deep connections with either old friends or new people. But I really find it like sometimes people that I've known for a while. I like really like they've known for a while but maybe didn't know that well. I reconnect with them at Burning Man and that tends to be like a really wonderful experience for me there. Um, things that have changed is like, you know, I mean I'm sure a lot of people say this, like I have last year somebody which they were stupid but they left a laptop in their car with it unlocked and their laptop got stolen, you know. My bike got stolen last year. Um, I've had like my car keys got stolen one year. Remember that. <laughs> you know about that. I remember that. Um, so that kind of stuff, and I think last year was the first time that I felt like I dealt with a couple instances of like sexual harassment and uncomfortable. It wasn't people touching me in uncomfortable ways, it was people saying things that I thought were really inappropriate. Like what? Uh, I, one day I was at Center Camp, I think I told you about this, yeah. I was at Center Camp and I went to get ice, and I was wearing like a little like uh, like a bikini top type thing. Uh -huh. But it was like it was like a little lingerie thing, but it was a little more than a bra. But anyways, I was standing <laughs> to get ice, and I was wearing like a little skirt. And I get a block of ice and I'm going to, to lift it up and the guy's like, you know, if you press that against your nipples, they'll get hard. 
It just seems like a kind of weird thing to say at Burning Man. Like, really? You don't think that's... I think that's kind of par for the course. Really? You think? I don't know. I don't think I've ever had someone be like, I don't know. That just seemed like a little bit much to me. Um, I have had, like, I read your um, tribe thing that oh, you wrote right, about the girl. right, right. I did have an instance, like, sometimes when you don't see, like, like she, I've never been, like, flight to Mars and had that much, but I have had people, like, grab my ass and stuff like that, like, on a dance floor, but not, nothing like I've read, like, where I felt really sexually. Yeah. I was like, get another drink. But... Um, yeah, I don't know. I thought for whatever reason in that moment the nipple con- comments me it was just weird. I'd never had anyone it really that. Weird, yeah. It hit me in a weird way. I'd never really had that kind what of What time of the week did it happen? That was early. It was like it was one of the first couple of days. Okay. Yeah. All right, so um, any advice to the virgin burner besides your boyfriend? <laughs> Drink lots of water. <laughs> um, I think for the virgin burners, uh, I don't know, I guess like just... For me, for whatever reason, I got so overwhelmed, it was almost like sometimes it would be like stressful because I like wanted to have fun, but I was like, what am I looking at? It's just like, go with it and be open to everything, so, and just enjoy it, and don't force what are your expectations on something and just let it be, because sometimes whatever happens is going to be better than whatever you expected it to be. And any advice to the jaded veteran burner? I don't know. I just, I think it's still fun. You get, you know, whatever you kind of put out there, I feel like, is what you get back. So I like look for good things. So even when stupid shit happens to me or people say things I don't like or my stuff gets stolen, I always try to just like look at the good points and the good stuff that I get out of it and the amazing connections I make with people. So yeah, I kind of, the rest of it, it just, it happens out in the everyday world too. So I just... I always try to look at the positive. All right, so now let's wrap this up, um, get you back in the frame here. Um, you're a couple. Any advice to couples on the playa? Love on the playa. I should know a lot about this since I did the burn cast last year about love on the playa. It was like the most romantic burn cast of all time. Everybody yes, it was. That. People loved it. Tanya and I were crying. Anyways, I think the best thing to do is just... Uh, Tell each other before you get, I think that's what I learned, like communication, if you're starting to get cranky or tired or if something is bothering you, talk about it before it really starts to bother you. Right? What do you think, Young? Sounds good, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. That's all I have to say. (laughs) All right, well, I hope you haven't been yet. I don't know about that. I hope you have an amazing first year at Burning Man and I can't wait to hear all about it. All right, thank you very much, guys. Thank you.